Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, where I watch it so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about episode 3 of Hulu's The Patient, entitled Issues. You know, after I uh, got done laughing at this title, because <laughs> I'm like, how unimaginative is it to have a show about therapy and name an episode Issues? Like, what's the, what's the next one going to be called? Medication? But I, got, I thought, oh, it's not very imaginative. But um, after I got through laughing at the episode title, I did find this episode to be pretty, uh, pretty compelling, pretty intriguing. Um, I, I I enjoyed this one and I liked how the term issues, like I, on the face of it, it's pretty obvious that we're talking about these issues. We're obviously talking about the issues of the patient, in this case, Sam. And th this episode does, uh, I guess, start to tackle his issues. But also, and this actually is even more intriguing to me than the uh, the issues that are causing Sam to behave in the way he is. The issues that are coming to the surface for Alan, I find to be pretty interesting as well. And I'm really interested in how they're going to tie into how he's going to handle the therapy with, with Sam. Because whatever it is that Alan's dealing with, which clearly revolves around like his religion and uh, his wife and family and things like that. I'm really curious to, uh, what part that's going to end up playing. But I want to talk, start talking about Sam's issues first. Because we pick up uh, right where we left off with the last episode with Alan hearing someone walking around upstairs and he asked, he calls out to that person and the person starts coming down the stairs and we don't see them. And then we open this episode and we find out that it was uh, Sam's mother who's upstairs. And Sam's mother, while she acknowledges and seems very uh, sharp, like she seems like she understands everything that's going on. Like she doesn't seem like she's missing any screws or anything like that. Uh, she says that she understands how messed up this whole situation is, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, she wants her son to be okay. And I've, I've always found that question kind of interesting the question of i wonder if any parents of serial killers ever know that their kid is a serial killer before that person gets caught and if so how do they handle that how do they deal with those emotions because i don't think i've ever heard of a serial killer having being turned in by their parents so i feel like if that happens this the parents don't actually turn the kid in but i still wonder how you deal with that especially if you're taken by surprise you know i know that there are parents who probably suspect that their kids are serial killers just from you know certain behaviors that they might have exhibited in their childhood and in their adolescence and they're like oh man i don't know about this kid and maybe they suspect it to the point where they know and they deny it but i'm just wondering like if there's any parents who have like had like like that definitive lay no. Like maybe their kid comes up to them and tells them like, yeah, you know, I've been killing motherfuckers and they, you know, it's kind of sucks. But, you know, like how do they handle that? But, you know, in this case, we see that, that in this case, in this case, Sam's mother is, she's trying to toe the line between, you know, understanding that what's happening is wrong, but not doing enough to prevent it from continuing or not doing anything to prevent it from continuing. So, uh, I find that to be uh, pretty interesting as well. But because of this, Alan suggests family therapy. He wants to involve the mother in the therapy with Sam. And Sam, you can tell he's very against it. He's doing his, uh, you know, where he's like kind of like wringing his fingers and shit. Like, you know, just looking really nervous and apprehensive. We saw that a lot, I think, in the first episode when he was still coming in dressed up. And he insists that his issues have nothing to do with their mother. But at the same time, they kind of do because... Uh, shared experiences what he experienced and what has turned him into who he is today his mother experienced the same thing and i think one of them said i can't remember what, oh i know one of them says i just can't remember which one but one of them says that they had to rely on each other to get through what his father was doing to them i think it was the mother that said that and they're going to be intrinsically linked because of that and alan notices that and i think very uh sharply as a thing i mean it's his job he should do that <laughs> but <clears throat> he notices and he makes the what I think is a, a, a smart decision in, say, in, tr in convincing Sam to agree to not hurt anyone as a means of protecting his mother. I thought that was a really, really smart play to make. And it um, doesn't work. <laughs> we end the episode with uh, Sam bringing presumably the guy that he's been uh, watching at this restaurant, pr bringing this guy home, throwing him into the bathroom. Uh, we hear him being duct taped even more, presumably, so he can't make any noise. And Sam walks off like with no, with not, without a word. You like, like he went against what he agreed to do with his therapist 
in front of his therapist and said nothing. He didn't even go like, yeah, I'm sorry, I lied. <laughs> he just did it. But um, yeah, I, I think that that's... Uh, I think that that's an interesting play to make to, to kind of loop the mother in. It looks, I mean, it clearly didn't work, but I wonder if now if Allen is going to adapt his strategy or if he's going to kind of like double down on it and try to get the mother to, uh, to be more involved. And then I also, I can't recall, but I feel like I heard this was only going to be six episodes, which means you're already halfway through. And if that's the case, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff to cover especially if we're only talking three episodes and especially if we're only talking three episodes that range from 22 to 24 minutes long. It's incredibly interesting to me that a show of this, a show that's taking a subject of this magnitude this seriously is only giving itself 23, 24 minutes to tell its story every week. Very interesting. But uh, moving on to Alan's issues, which again, like I said, I find them to be even more interesting, I think, than Sam's issues because I mean we've seen a lot of stuff about serial killers and what motivates them whether that's documentaries whether that's movies whether that's tv shows the idea of a of a serial killer and and trying to understand how that person's mind works commonplace what we see with Alan and and how this um seems to tie into his religion or at the very least his religion is impacting his experience that's a lot more interesting to me actually and um Given what we see in this episode, is not surprising. So uh, we we have one flashback. Well, we flash back to one moment in time. I think we do it two, maybe three times. I can't recall. But it's his son's wedding. And his mother wants to perform a song. And they won't... I was trying to find a way to, to mince words here. But I don't respect idiocy. And what happens in this scene is so fucking moronic. And I have no respect for it. And this is why I hate religion. Because of stupid fucking customs like this. Like, I wouldn't even want to worship a deity that can go, yeah, you know, you've lived a good life, but you let a woman sing at a ceremony. So, mm, I don't know. What kind of stupid fucking rule is that? To and there's people walking out. The son looks ashamed. I loved how Alan looked at him like, yeah, you fucking deal with it, bitch. Like he just just looked at him like, you're gonna, you're gonna fucking deal with this. Like that was so infuriating me because stupid fucking religious customs that only serve to dehumanize or diminish uh anyone who's not a white man make me fucking sick. There's no point to that. What religious duty or purpose does it serve to say women can't sing at a ceremony? It's so fucking dumb. And I loved, I love, 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 loved that Alan just looked at him like, yeah, this is happening. And he just had to sit there and look awkward. His wife had to sit there and look awkward as dumb fucks decided they wanted to walk out of this ceremony because it's so offensive for a woman to sing a song at a ceremony. God, that was so fucking stupid. And I know it's, I know it's not, I know that's a real thing. I know it's not fabricated because every religion has something, some stupid fucking rule like that. I'm so I, I, I'm telling you, I get turned up over stupid fucking rules and religion loves them, loves them. But moving on from that, I lo also loved how that scene added a little bit, a little bit of context to the previous scene, because not previous scene, but for the previous uh, episode when uh, Alan tries to gift his son that guitar. You know, you you glean from that that scene that there's some sort of awkwardness between uh, Alan and his son. You glean that this guitar has some sort of special meaning, but to find out <laughs> that that's where this guitar is from and to see how the son responded to it, it adds a little bit more context to that uh, attempt to gift that that guitar to his son. So. Um, that's all I have on the episode, but I do have a couple of thoughts that I wanted to mention real quick. So, um, the first is I loved when Sam said she was a good mother. She made me sandwiches and did my laundry. Like, <laughs> congratulations, but like, there's way more that goes into being a good mother than that. Uh, I also love how Steve Carell kind of plays Alan as someone who is simultaneously trying to be a good therapist and help Sam. But you can kind of tell under the surface that you can't trust him because he's going to try to escape at the first fucking moment. So when he says like, hey, you know, this isn't going to work if you don't unchain me. 
even me as a, you know, I'm not a therapist by any means, but as someone who I consider myself to have a reasonable mind, what impact does that really have? Like Sam says, like the chain's on your leg, not your mouth. And my, I, I spoke to the screen right after and I said, nor is it on his ears. Like, cause I'm like, like I, I don't buy that. They're like, I can't do this if I'm unchained. Like I can buy that when you're first starting out and you're, you're in that desperation mode, like something is scary, something scary is happening here. I need to get out. I will say anything I can. But now that he's already been there for a minute and they've already had conversations trying to say like, yeah, you know, I can't do this with this chain on my leg. I, I'd call bullshit on that if I was Sam. So it's like on one hand, you see him trying to actually trying to help, but still at every moment thinking about some way he can escape. And, and Sam, you know, he plays the card himself. Like, you know, I said Sam, but I meant Alan. You know, like, oh, you're younger than me. You're stronger than me, which I think Donald Gleason being stronger than Steve Carell is highly fucking debatable. But, you know, you're younger than me. You're stronger than me. What do you think is going to happen? Like, he tries to downplay it. But they keep showing us him imagining breaking that, uh, that uh, pot and stabbing him with it. And, like, I don't even like that scene because I like the ambiguity of the way Carell is playing the character, I don't necessarily need to have that shown to me with him imagining killing killing Sam. So I do en I do enjoy the way Carell is playing this character, but also I, I still think, I think given that Steve Carell has been in so many comedies, people are more inclined to shower praise upon him for his performance here, but I continue to be more impressed by Donald Gleason uh, in this show. So uh, great work from both, by the way, but... Yeah, I really enjoy how Carell is, is kind of letting it be known that there's a part of him that is still kind of like, yeah, I'll help you, but if I get a chance to escape or fuck you up, I'm going to take either one. <laughs> um, and then I wonder if Sam's taste in food is going to play a part in how this show is ultimately resolved. Because I feel like that, like the way they're putting an emphasis on not just uh, what he eats, because he seems to have an affinity for like Asian cuisine, but that it always seems to be, he has a, he has a sophisticated palate. How is that going to factor into it? Because if it's not, why are you really leaning into this? So, uh, yeah, interesting, interesting note. So, uh, let me know what you think, uh, in the comments, uh, about my questions. If you choose to let me know what you think about the way I slandered this, the, the flashback scene, feel free. Uh, if you agree with me, I might go, Hey, yeah, you agree with not, you agree with not agreeing with stupid fucking rules either. If you're going to come and defend it to me, I might just delete your comment and tell you to fuck off. Who knows? It's indisputably moronic to, to outlaw a woman from singing at a, at a, at an event. Like if you go outlaw all singing, fine. But like, we don't allow women to sing here. Such a stupid fucking rule. Anyway, I will see you guys next week for episode four. Until then, peace.